is a little difference, a little, I don't know what it is. Somebody, my man Brandon, said that it was called the experience. Um, so I don't want to scare you, but if you see me walking, I'm more likely going to walk this way. I'm probably going to be walking back and forth, but that's okay. I'm just, sometimes I get a little zoned out. That's all right? Zoned yeah. Out, um, I guess I'll start with Revenge of the Foster Kid. Mm -hmm. Um... So I was uh, born in uh, Philly, um, a place called Nice Town, small Grad Street, um, was where I was the last foster home I remember. So when people ask me from Philly, I kind of say yes, but then I'm hesitant because that's just the last street that I was at. Um, and then after that, I was taken by a lady in South Jersey who took me straight to middle class. And when I was in her home, when I was young, I wrote this particular story. Okay? Alright. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> this is Revenge of the Foster Kid. Woo! 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 This is Revenge of the Foster Kid. I am not a crackhead. I am the son of a crackhead. So how do I find the nigga that sold to my mom so I can come crack and say, woo? How do I find them? I researched his birth, I can find them. So me and my niggas can act like we need to work in Kokano. On the block doing 60, sure, come down the block doing 60. How could he sell to my mom when she looking frail and she about 60? This is the night in my life that I think I'm gonna have to get busy. See, this is the pain of a foster child, so this night I'ma get busy. See, he is the master. My mom is the slave. The cot is the drug, and this is the way these people get paid, okay? See, the whip is the stress. Overdose is the noose, and rehab is Harriet Tubman trying to help all the slaves loose, goddamn. So what do I do when I find the person that's helping my mom commit suicide, and I know it for certain? This is Revenge of the Foster Kid. This is the poetry version. I do this for all the foster kids, and I know they still hurting. See, my soul is on fire. It feel like a napalm. I was so crusty. I was so dirty. There was no soap and no Avon. My adoption paper said that I was eating the crayons. My adoption paper said that I was eating the crayons. So I tie them up. I take them down to the basement. This is for all of my pain and all of my blood that spilled in the pavement. What happened to him? I leave that to your imagination. <clears throat> my son, are you in these streets talking about revenge? My son, are you really in these streets talking about re retribution? My son. Are you talking about the abandoned houses, my son? I told you to use your power to go in power. Dear foster child, this is your job. Every time y'all see an iPhone, the creator of that company was a foster child. His name was Steve Jobs. See, this is not no facts. This is all opinions. There was a white boy who played the banjo. He was a foster child. They call him one of the greats. They call him John Lennon. Now, before I go, they're going to try to say that you're damaged. You come from Philly, you come from a bad neighborhood that makes you disadvantaged. You have to tell those people to their face though, no disrespect, I don't need medication. Can't you see that I manage? Well, before I go, I don't know if anybody told this. <laughs> I don't know if anybody told this. But you're, they're going to try to say that you're really nothing, that you're hardcore. Deep down inside, that you're concrete, but you're really roses. See, there was a young boy who was sent down the river in the Bible. He was a foster child. His name was Moses. Thank you. Um, this is the one I performed um, at Temple. Um, I was asked about the United Nations. I was asked to come to the United Nations to talk about black America. And I said, well, I'm not really a politician. They said, well, come on anyway. I said, well, I don't think I'm good to do this, they said, well, you need to speak to black America, to the entire world. I said, you sure you want me to say yes, go ahead. So I said, okay, what I do? I go home. This is a vision I had. I do some research, though. The research is real, so I go online, and I start studying all these black movies. I told Eric, it was literally 40, 50 black movies, but I couldn't do it. I said, I gotta cut it down, because I can get real long with these poems. Cut it down to four. Four black movies. I implore you to write this down. This is good gems I'm about to give you. Um, I like to impact. I don't like to impress. 
Um, so this is what happened. I stood in front of the United Nations and said, well, look, guys, I'm going to tell you about these four movies. I implore you to have your assistants, your secretaries, to write it in your language, to go back to your country and expire them. And this is what happened. Well, <clears throat> I'm a black American, but I can't speak for us all. But if I recall, when they killed my brother at 15th and Dolphin, I wanted to go to a bar. No, I'm lying. I wanted to imitate a movie called Boys in the Hood. Do you remember that movie? When there was a guy named Ricky. Ricky! Except for I wouldn't have been Ricky. I would have been that black dude with the light eyes shooting out that little red car, shooting that Ricky from far. Now, why? I would not have came to this event to promote bonds, but I will give y'all some honesty. My mom had went to that particular hood, and she put up these posters to find my brother's killers. But they kept ripping it down because in the hood, they signed the no snitch policy. And that left me with a scar. So welcome to some of my black emotions. Do y'all remember a movie called Friday? Not the new ones, but the old one. Yeah. There was a guy named Smokey. Mm -hmm. He broke me so much laughter. It's hard to give that DVD a grin as I learned that Smokey was addicted to weed and his soul was a piece of molded bread. And every time he smoked that tree, I could see that his soul was starting to crumble from within. And he was smoking with a guy named Hector. Y'all remember Hector? Yeah. Well, Hector didn't tell him that it was angel dust. So when he was smoking, he started hallucinating, smacking himself, thinking that it was roaches and things crawling on his skin. But again, this happens in our communities. Mm -hmm. It happened to my mom. She's in the facility right now. Ah, I'm glad we're in Germantown. My brother's probably getting high right now, y'all, on Chew in Washington Lane. I call it drug promiscuity. Hip-hop likes to fantasize about the way that we use drugs and they talk about it musically. But they don't talk about the people that were gunned down in neighborhoods and kids that were killed by accident and put on obituaries. The they don't talk about them stories usually. But excuse me, welcome to some of my black emotions. Well, there was a movie called Jungle Fever. Do y'all remember that? 1991. Five women was arguing. Black men hear me clearly. The one girl said, there's no good black men. She says either they're drug addicted, incarcerated, they got so many women that that part of the population is diminished. Well, the one black girl said, I like white men, Chinamen, Spanish men, they cut her off. They said she was the reading rainbow. They didn't even let her finish her sentence. <laughs> well, I came to Germantown today to expose y'all to different black women who have different opinions, but we do have a disease. It's not HIV, it's not diabetes, it's something called Jim Crowism. Mm -hmm. Dark-skinned girl talked about it. She says, well, listen. She says, do you know what it's like to be unattractive, to be the darkest one in the class? Light-skinned girl said, I can't even believe you would believe in that. Dark-skinned girl said, yeah. Black men used to leave me for girls that look like you. Light skin, long hair, wasn't too far in the past. Sorry that your man left you for a white woman, but excuse me, that's the same ocean but a different raft. It was hard to put that part of the poem right in the pad, but welcome to some of my black emotions. I gotta get out of here. But there was a movie called The Kayla and the Bee. Y'all remember that movie? Mm -hmm. I thought it was stupid, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I said, who would wanna watch a movie about spelling? But it wasn't about spelling. It was about self-discovery. She kept telling her mom, mom, come see me. And her mom ignored her because she had a lot going on. Her parents thought that she was weird that she wasn't like enough. She had two boxing rings, like some of us in here do. Mm. One in our mind and one in our heart, the way we consistently fight and stuff. Lawrence Fishburne said, what do you want to be in your life? He said, she said, well, I'm just good at spelling. He said, go read this quotation. It said, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me say this again. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. Uh, it is not the darkness. Uh, it is not the darkness. It is not the darkness. It's the light that frightens us. That's mm. when my prefrontal cortex was enlightened and my amygdala was lightning struck. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait a second. As I was doing this poem, I said to the United Nations, that wasn't for that black girl. That wasn't for me. That was for you to inspire your entire nation. When I learned about myself, my brother got murdered. I talked about Smokey, and I talked about black women and the men that they was dating. One thing that I forgot to mention is that we're all God's, God's beautiful creation. But I got to go. So if you see anything about racism or Jim Crowism, I want you to say this. I don't know if you're for real. I don't know if you're joking. But I came to Germantown, and I met this guy called Ambition the Poet. And he got this poem. He said to tell you if I hear racism or Jim Crowism to say welcome, welcome to the black emotion. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
like I told you, I do things a little bit different than the rest of the poets. Been judged, good, bad, depends. But I try to impact your soul. My name is Ambition. It's really not Ambition. I carry it as a banner. Hoping that when you say my name, you think about yourself. What's inside of you? Your own ambition. I don't wear it. I just have it as a banner. So they always say my name. I went to a networking event with all these professionals. They said, what's your name? I said, it's Ambition. Ambition. I said, yeah. Because when you say my name, it's for you. It's not for me. They looked at me weird. I said, yeah. Yeah, I'm a poet. I'm a poet. And I'm not afraid to be different. And I want to encourage you guys to be the same. Always love your craft for you and nobody else. When I'm up here, it's for me and hope to impact somebody's soul, you know? Um, before, so it's my last poem. It's called Be Yourself. This is the first time I performed it, so I, I don't know how it go, but we about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I do these poems because I believe really do a lot of group poem work. I group at group poems, so I talk to kids. So that's why it's kind of like a, yeah. This show is called Be Yourself. Well, do y'all remember a show called Family Matters? Yeah. Mm. There was a guy named Urkel, glasses, two times the width of his face, checkered shirt, candy, apple red, suspenders. He wanted the girl named Laura, but Laura couldn't see that he was as bright as an active galactic nuclei. Who am I? His whole soul shined like an ember. But she really didn't know that. He didn't believe in that. So he ended up creating what I would call a liquid plastic surgery. See, back in the day, they used to call it an elixir. When he started to drink it, if you watched the episode, he started shaking. Like his whole body was in the blender. Do you remember it? Well, some of us don't need Laura. We need a girl named Myra. Myra came on the show and she yeah. said, Urkel, you don't need to be Stefan Arkell. You don't need a liquid. You don't need a machine. You don't need to use the brain that was given to you by God to sit in the lab to quadruple and triple your cool jeans. I love you for the way you are, which is snorting, <laughs> your big glasses, and your high-ass jeans. Well, I hope that somebody reminds themselves to be themselves. Maybe you still don't feel me. There was a show called Girlfriends. I don't know if y'all remember. There was a girl named Tony. Hold on. Tony, uh, Tony's that girl. Y'all got y'all had a friend that's from the hood, but swear they from Malibu. <laughs> her insecurity, her insecurity could eat the protein from her toenail all the way up to her hair follicle. Mm. Mm. I wish I had a projector so I could put on a PowerPoint presentation and a poetic module. Well, Tony thought it was a good idea to get Botox mm. for her face that was unfortunate. <laughs> See, when you get Botox, it's a normal toxin. Shots went to her head, made her one eyebrow go up like a roller coaster. Uh, that made her whole face look disproportionate. Uh, back in the day, uh, we could say where her eyebrow is. We would say it's a midget, but now we got to say it's a small portion. Right. small person. Uh, it would be a small person, uh, which is hairy, black, and you would call it a contortionist. Well, I started laughing, y'all. I started laughing, but I found out this is real in real life. E Network got a show called Botch, where women are cutting and slicing themselves up, putting silicones in certain slots. Well, I watched a movie by a Marvel called Doctor Strange. See, you cannot Doctor Strange your beauty. You can't Doctor Strange your human body. You can't reverse the clock. Well, I hope that somebody here reminds themselves to be themselves. Maybe you still don't feel me. You gotta watch a show called Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm. Mm. There was a guy named Carlton and Will that was trying to join a fraternity. Do y'all remember that episode? Yeah. Well, he told the guy. He said, um, he said, um, let me say something. He said, they they got rich. I found out that Carlton was rich. Jealousy started to eat at the meat of your soul like salmonella. They had Carlton washing the floors, using a toothbrush like he was a black-bearded Cinderella. But his work ethic was impeccable. His whole body made of intelligence was stellar. They said, Will, come here. Will, you made it, but your cousin, he's a weirdo. Well, they started arguing. If you remind yourself of the episode, look at the people in the background. They was caught in the jam. It was the first time they probably saw a black man arguing with another black man about being black. They was all looking like, we don't understand. But Carlton said something clear. He said something clear. What did he say? He said, I'm not trying to be black. Black is what I am. Mm -hmm. What I learned on that day is what I learned mm -hmm. on this journey. You don't have to change yourself for no gang. You don't have to change yourself for an environment. And all them kids that's going to school, tell them right now, don't ever change yourself for no fraternity. Well, mm -hmm. tell them mm -hmm. people to mind themselves, to be themselves. Maybe you still don't feel me. There was a show called Martin. Mm. <laughs> uh, Martin didn't understand. Martin didn't understand. 
Martin was mad because his girl rolled with somebody called Thomas the Hitman her in a limbo. He thought it was a good idea to misdiagnose what he called the defined threat. Mm. Mm. Wanted the girl. He wanted to he wanted to let his emotions talk him into something he couldn't get himself out of. Mm. Was to hang them in the ring with Thomas the Hitman Herman with so many rights and left. He was beating them so bad, <laughs> Martin was running around hiding and ducking behind the ref. If you look back to the episode, it was so funny. He knocked them out the ring. He flew out the ring like his shoes was a pair of airlines. Mm. If Thomas the Hitman Hearns would have kept beating him up, he would have removed his whole entire hairline. <laughs> if you go back to the episode, you'll see that Martin's shoe was hanging on a rope like a piece of fruit that belonged in the orchard. Martin was ended up in the wall, plastered, like he was a family portrait. Well, it was all said and done. He said, Gina, give me a kiss. Do you remember that part? She said, give me a kiss. Uh -uh. She ain't want to do it. She couldn't tell the difference between the lumps on his head and the lumps that was on his lips. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this amusement park called Be Yourself Trip. Well, I wanted to remind you guys, remind you guys to be yourself. Thank you. All right. yeah. Yeah.